Oh! I cast this one out short. That's a jack, bro! It's a jack! It's a jack. It's a jack. Woo! We got something here on the short rod again. Oh, I think that's a pompano. I think that's a pompano. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Dude, let's go. Yeah. All right, good morning guys. So I just got to start this video out by just giving a big shout out to my good buddy Chris from the Hookcraft YouTube channel. If you guys are looking for a quality fishing partner, this is your guy right here. <laughs> this dude works at 9 a.m. today, <laughs> nine o'clock. And here he is waking up at four in the morning just to come out here to the beach and get skunked with me. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Nah, we're going Chris Kyle, everybody, Hookcraft YouTube channel. No, so uh, yeah, we're out here on the beach, guys, pompano fishing. That's all you need to know. Let's just get after it, guys. Uh, the sun's not even up yet. It's bright and early. I'm tired as hell. Let's go. So for bait today, we're doing uh, sand fleas. We got some live sand fleas here. So we're gonna put those on our uh, pompano rigs. And then we're gonna tip that um, with some fish bites. Perfect. Right in that deep water where that rip starts peeling off. There we go, there we go, there we go. All right, we got a school moving in, baby. I think it's off. Oh. That's a fish. That was the short one. Oh yeah, that's a pompano. That's a pompano. That's a good one, dude. Let's go. Let's go. That might not be a pompano, dude. I think that's a redfish. Really? I think that's a redfish. So, of course, I was doing everything off camera. We had all our rods super far out. This dude down here, all of a sudden, every single one of his rods went off at the same time, and we were like, what the hell? And then uh, I cast this one out short. That's a jack, bro. It's a jack. It's a jack. It's a jack. Woo! Dude. Let's go. Let's go, dude. Here, can you. Uh... Yeah, like, where? Yeah, just wait for the I got fish grips, too. Here. Oh, did he just pop? Oh! No, no, he's No, he's not. It's because I was f***ing around. I knew that was going to happen, dude. Damn it! Man, whose rig is this? Dude, that jack had another... Dude, he might have broke off this thing yeah. here. Yeah. Alright, hey, there's a rig on the ground right here. Don't uh, step on it. Alright, you just turn that off. Damn it, dude. I should not have stopped the Ugh. The dude next to us had like four rods going off at the same time, which was just absolutely bananas to witness. And then of course, uh, I got hooked up on one and uh, unfortunately lost that jack, which was a bummer. So uh, we moved. We're gonna see if we can get onto something here. There isn't really any kind of like structure, like really any features or anything out here. Um, really just nice deep trough between the two sandbars. I've already got three baits out there, same thing. Uh, sand fleas and fish bites. Got those set on Sputniks with the pompano rigs out there. So we're just gonna see what we can do, guys. I'm gonna leave those out. Every like 15, 20 minutes, we'll check baits. And uh, hopefully we get hit, we get some pompano, and I can have dinner tonight. Ew! All right, of course the camera was not rolling, but we got something here on the short rod again. Fairly good size. Got him right here on the beach. Let's see what we got. Oh, I think that's a pompano. I think that's a pompano. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah, come on, come on. Dude, let's go. Yes. Oh yeah, dude, freaking pump, no. These guys gotta be 11 to the fork. And I'm pretty sure that we're gonna make it. is a 12 12 and a half inch pompano alrighty guys there's a look at that little pompano decent little 12 inch pompano nothing big but definitely enough for dinner tonight first one we found today and after this morning um, getting that jack broken off uh, which really sucked um, pompano is definitely a nice Nice little comeback. All right, get this Pompano in the cooler. He's coming home for dinner tonight. What is up guys? Unfortunately been kind of slow this past week, but we did manage one nice Florida Pompano. So the video from today is not super extravagant um, because we only caught one Pompano and it was really slow other than that. But I thought that I could take time to show you guys how I like to clean this Pompano and then uh, we're gonna cook it up. Um, what we're gonna be doing today is uh, obviously I'm gonna show you guys how to clean this Pompano. Now, if you type how to clean a Pompano into the YouTube search results, pretty much every single video is gonna show you how to fillet a Pompano. We're not gonna do that today. Um, I'm actually gonna show you guys another method. Um, it's a little bit easier actually. The method that I'm gonna use is going to make sure that we keep the most amount of meat possible. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do for this method, um, because we're not gonna be filleting this fish and we are going to leave the skin on, is I'm gonna take my fillet knife and believe it or not, Pompano do have scales. Scaled Pompano go from back to front and I like to just take the uh, blade of my fillet knife and you can just slowly run it just like that. Now, if you guys take a look here, you can kind of see the uh, the color change. You can see that it's shiny up here on the top of the fish and down here on the bottom of the fish, it's a little bit more rough and it's kind of a dull color and that's because it's now missing the scale. So that's how you can kind of tell if you missed a spot while scaling your pompano. If it's still shiny, it probably still has scales on it. If you take a look at that fillet knife there, you can really see all of those scales that are coming off that pompano. So it is helpful to uh, have yourself a little paper towel and occasionally just take some of those scales off of that fillet knife. All right, and there it is. So you can see all those pompano scales there. Um, kind of looks like that stuff on uh, doc Dr. Pipple Popper where they, uh, you know, could squeeze the, yeah. Anyway, at this point too, it's always a good idea to go ahead and just kind of spray your fillet board off. All those scales are gonna be sitting on there. So we're gonna start with the fish upside down. And uh, you guys can see they've got these, these little belly fins here on the other side of their belly. So we're gonna start right behind those. And we're gonna just go straight through the fish right up the gill plates bada boom you're going to go through the spine and then what we're going to do now is these pompano have some really really good head meat we don't want to leave that off so once you get up uh almost the top of the gill plates go ahead and follow that skull you can turn your knife forward and you can follow that skull all the way around and right off the uh, top of the head just like that you can see if we take a look at uh, the the body of the fish here how much of that head meat was actually on there versus if you just go straight up um you know over the top of the gill plates um and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, flip this pompano on its side and uh, go ahead and take your fillet knife and i like to just pop it right in there and then just run right down the belly don't get that fillet knife too far in there because you're going to be cutting through guts and uh, it's just gonna be kind of nasty. So once you unzip the belly of that fish, you can open it up and you can see that the gut sac, um, the cavity where the actual innards of these fish are, um, actually does not extend super far back. So this is where the head and the gill plates were right here. This is the entire gut sac. So if we open that up, you can see that's where the actual meat 
uh, starts for the tail section of the fish. So once you get to that section, uh, go ahead and stop. It's right about where that fin starts there underneath the uh, underside of the fish. And then I like to just take my knife and you can kind of just come right up in here and scoop those guts out just like that. And you might need to work just a little bit further back uh, depending on which side of the fin that you're on. So you can take the uh, rest of the intestinal tract out there at the back of the fish. And then once we flip this fish open, if you guys take a look inside there, um, you'll see this uh, membrane right here. And then there's all this nasty red blood underneath where that membrane is. So you want to take that out. If you don't take that out, you're going to get a really fishy flavor um, and it's not going to be really good. So I like to just go ahead and puncture that membrane uh, with my fillet knife and you can scoop all of that uh, kind of coagulated, coagulated, what's the term? It's like gelatin, gelatiny blood. You can kind of scoop all that gelatiny blood uh, right out of the fish carcass. I think it's coagulated, right? I don't know. You guys will have to tell me down in the comments or don't. I'm gonna Google it after this anyway. Um, and then once we get to this point where you have all of the innards out, you've got that uh, that bloodline out of there. I'm gonna go ahead and spread off the hose again. We're gonna spray our fillet board off and uh, that's that's pretty much it. We are back. Um, we are gonna be doing this on the grill tonight for dinner. Um, I've got some fish baskets that my mom actually got me for Christmas. Um, so we're gonna put this in the fish baskets. We're gonna do it on the grill. So before we do that, the last thing that we need to do before we uh, put away our fillet knife and our cutting board is we need to go ahead and cut some diamond shapes on the outside of the fish through the skin. And the reason for that is uh, one, it's gonna help it get nice and crispy and cook evenly on the grill. And two, uh, what it's really gonna do is by cutting it into those diamond shapes, it's gonna let you pick it off of the skeleton of the fish and make eating it a whole lot easier uh, once that meat is nice and cooked through. And uh, that is what you should end up with. So if we kind of peel that open, you guys can see um, we've got some nice little one by one cubes and you can see too by doing it this way just how thick that meat is and how much meat is actually there versus if you take the fillets off of the skeleton on a pompano especially a smaller size one like this you're gonna be losing a lot of meat so this is uh, a way that you can do this and preserve the most amount of meat and it turns out really freaking good so i'll see you guys uh, back here in a few hours we're gonna throw this thing on the grill and uh, then we're gonna eat it All right, you guys, it is time to get dinner going. It's like five o'clock right now, starting to get hungry. And I'm excited, man. I haven't had pompano since like last summer, I think. That's how long it's been since I've caught one. So um, I've got the grill preheating here. Usually when I do pompano, um, I like to keep the grill about as low as possible, which for this particular grill is about 320, 325 degrees. Um, we're gonna be doing some sides today. So I've got a good little medley of green beans and uh, red potatoes. So all I did is just uh, took the potatoes into fourths, uh, trimmed the green beans up, and then I tossed both of them together in in, uh, olive oil butter garlic salt and pepper um, rub a little oil on your pan so they don't stick and then we're gonna go ahead and get those on the grill right now those are gonna take probably about 20 minutes longer uh, than the fish will so in that time we're gonna go ahead and prepare the fish by getting it into the basket and having it ready um, definitely make sure you rub that with oil before you put it on your grill otherwise that fish is gonna stick to it and it's gonna break apart when you try to scrape it off and it's gonna be a big mess so in the in this time when the veggies are cooking but we don't have the fish on yet it's a really good time to get our sauce made so I like to do a nice homemade tartar sauce um, I already went inside and just whipped that up real quick um, just to uh, make the filming process a little bit easier and quicker so uh, I like to just do mayonnaise um, I'll cut up a fresh dill pickle um, into like really small minced pieces and put those in um, I'll squeeze some lemon into it and then I did uh, on this one I did something a little bit different I did kind of like a Baja kind of uh, tartar sauce so it's got a little bit of kick to it should be pretty good and then I just do a uh, salt and pepper in there and a little bit of fresh garlic and uh, just give it a nice stir it usually comes out pretty good man um, way better than store-bought tartar sauce if I do say so myself 
All right, so let's check on these veggies here. Um, you definitely, uh, even though you oil up the pan, you still wanna make sure you kind of stir these things around to make sure they're not getting burned up too bad. Give them a nice little flip, stir them around. If you need to add more oil or whatever, now is definitely a good time before they start sticking really bad. So we're gonna. So to season this fish up, um, we're just gonna use some classic Old Bay seasoning, keep it nice and easy. We've got salt, pepper. I've got a couple lemons sliced up, ready to go. And then we're also just gonna use a little bit of oil. So we'll do our Old Bay seasoning on uh, the first side here. Get some fresh cracked pepper. Some salt. And then we're gonna do just a nice drizzle of oil on that fish. That's gonna help it get nice and crispy on the outside. And then we're gonna go ahead and place our lemon on the fish and we should be good to go ahead and close her up. And then we're gonna do the same on this side. And close her up. So once you get that fish done, you get your grill closed up. At this point, you really need to be mindful of how long that fish is on. If you let it sit on there just a minute too long, it's gonna get way overdone. It's gonna be chewy, rubbery, and you don't want that. So um, I like to wait probably four to five minutes, and then that's the first time that I'm gonna open the lid on the grill. Um, I'll give it one good flip, and then I like to wait about a minute to two minutes after that, and then I'll temp it real quick, um, and it should be right about 145 degrees. All right, it's been about five minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, check on this fish here, give her a good flip, and then I'm gonna wait like one to two minutes on this opposite side, and this is looking really good. It's getting nice and crispy, um, and you can see those diamond cuts that we made earlier are starting to open up as that meat cooks, and that's how we're gonna pick that, that meat off of uh, the skeleton of the fish and eat it. Alrighty guys, this pompano is temping right at about 145, 150, perfect temperature. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it on off of the grill. Get that closed up and turn it off before I forget. Burn all my propane up. Check that out guys. Beautiful, whole, cooked, grilled pompano. Absolutely amazing. Let's open this thing up and see how we did. Ooh, yeah. Alrighty guys, there it is. Beautiful whole grilled pompano. Flip her over here so you guys can, can kind of see. So you can see that uh, diamond cut that we did there doing those, those cross cuts across the skin and it just results in this beautiful crispy skin with that perfect white flaky flesh underneath. So we got our sides here so I'm gonna get this plated up and then we're gonna see how we did and give this the old taste test. That skeleton of the fish just like it's supposed to dip in that tartar sauce mm. amazing alrighty guys so I have finished that pompano and I just want to show you guys real quick before we close this video out that is what is left of that pompano so you guys can see how doing it this way um, really allows you to get the most amount of meat um, that's possible off of that fish. Normally when you, when you do uh, you know fillets and you actually take the meat off of the skeleton, there's all that meat between the ribs and everything that gets left behind unfortunately. And there's so much of it there. And uh, even a small, um, you know, little 12 and a half inch pompano, this size uh, has a ton of meat on there that you're not normally gonna get doing those fillets. And it was plenty to feed uh, both my wife and myself and the dogs just a little bit. So anyway guys, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know down below in the comments. Um, leave a like and if you're not subscribed to the channel already, definitely consider doing so. Check out some of my other content um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was real good, definitely an easy recipe. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, something that you can do different with a, a pompano and really any fish uh, you know, about this size to really maximize the amount of meat that you're gonna get out of it as opposed to traditionally um, you know, filleting the fish. So let me know if you guys enjoyed the video. I appreciate you guys so much and as always thank you and I'll see you on the next one.